The Vienna Up Initio Simulation Package has a new version, VASP 6.5. You can now use even more powerful features to access material properties with large-scale simulations. Let's look at a few highlights. The biggest addition is certainly electron-phonon coupling. Actually, electron-phonon coupling is so fundamentally important that you can see its effect in basic properties like the electronic band gap. Now you can do band gap renormalization in just a short VASP job. Here we have a setup to simulate carbon in a diamond structure. In the INCA file, we set the usual parameters for the electronic minimization and on top of that we specify a bunch of parameters for the electron phonon calculation. In the end, we want to obtain the band gap renormalization as a function of temperature, so we need to specify which temperatures to compute the band gap at. Additionally, we have an input file called fellparams.h5. You see here that it contains information we took from a previous VASP calculation in a supercell of the same system. For instance, there are the force constants and the change in the potential due to ionic displacements. We now run the electron phonon calculation. You can write a small Python script to first read the data from the VASP out.h5 file and then plot the band gap renormalization as a function of temperature. Very intuitive. Next up, modeling transport properties using Boltzmann theory. The description of properties like the resistivity, the Seebeck coefficient, the thermal conductivity, all suffer under the limitations of the Born-Oppenheimer approximation. With the new electron phonon feature in VASP, you can compute all you need to determine the thermoelectric figure of merit. Again, we have a fellparams.h5 file from a supercell calculation, this time for lithium hydride, which is a semiconductor. In the in-car, we specify all the options like setting the electron phonon mode to transport to get convenient defaults, scanning different doping levels, and again, choosing the temperatures. An important option to highlight is the selection of the level of approximation for the electronic scattering. You have a large number of approximations to choose from that come at different computational costs. Here we select the cheap constant relaxation time approximation, the more sophisticated phonon self-energy relaxation time approximation and the momentum relaxation time approximation. Conveniently, all of them are done in the same VASP run and as usual reported in the outca file. First, you find some information for each transport calculator. Here n equal 1 is CRTA, n equal 2 is the SERTA, n equal 3 is MRTA lambda for the first doping level. And then n equal 4, 5 and 6 for the next doping level. And so on. Finally, for all parameter combinations, you obtain a table with the transport properties. Here we combine those properties to plot the figure of merit for the different approximations. You see that, as expected for a semiconductor, the constant lifetime approximation is really bad for lithium hydride. But anyways, it is nice that we are now able to see that for a realistic simulation. Next up is our new plugin infrastructure. In a nutshell, you can access, read, and manipulate your VASP job via Python functions that you can write yourself. It basically is a direct interface to control the structure, forces, stress, the local potential and more with just a few lines of Python code. This is extremely flexible. Let's do a small demo to get an idea of how this works. Here we look at a silicon vacancy hopping. 
In the structure, you see one defect where a silicon atom is missing in the bulk structure. This vacancy can hop to a neighboring site. If we know the transition path, it is easy to do multiple static calculations and plot the electronic density. The same transition can now be done with a more versatile Python interface. In the INCA file, we set plugins slash structure equal to true. We then have to provide a VASP plugin.py script that defines a function called structure. In the documentation, you find which constants and which additions are available. In this example, we go step by step through a predefined set of positions. And then we make a plot using the charge density and the lactose vectors. The calculation is not heavy at all, so we can execute it simply in serial mode. We see now how the electronic minimization happens. Then a window opens. This is the charge density. Without restarting VASP, the next electronic minimization takes place. And we see the charge density updated. This is a new way for you to immerse yourself in the calculation and take control on a different level. In its core, VASP is, of course, a code to solve the electronic problem. There is a zoo of possibilities to include exchange correlation effects already available. But until we find the holy grail, that is, the functional that can do it all, we will keep adding new options for you. This time, there are a couple of novel MetaGGA functionals. And there is a feature to remove sources and drains of the exchange correlation B field. We know that sometimes DFT is not enough. So for our users that like to construct model Hamiltonians, I charge equal five is a good way to update the charge density based on an external model calculation. Here, for example, we run DFT and DMFT in a loop until charge self-consistency is reached. In the final density of states, we see how the typical Hubbard bands form and a quasi-particle peak is pinned at the Fermi level. For optical properties, the correct description of electron-hole interactions is key. Excitonic states, however, do not come at a low computational cost. There are two steps to solving the beta zalpeta equation. The first step is setting up the matrix. This has been significantly optimized in the new BSE driver for better scaling on CPUs as well as on GPUs. The other step is solving the beta zalpeta equation. The INCA tag IBSE allows to switch between different algorithms. We now offer a new exact diagonalization driver and a super fast Lanchos algorithm. The Lanchos algorithm significantly reduces the number of iterations compared to the time evolution algorithm. It is optimal for large matrices where exact diagonalization would simply take too long. Let's look at a simple bulk silicon calculation. The BSE matrix has a rank of 170,368. With the Lanchos algorithm, the spectra can be found in just one hour. For the exact diagonalization, the same calculation can take up to 14 hours. There are many other new features in VASP 6.5. A new full Davidson algorithm, a Coulomb kernel truncation in order to compute the properties of dipolar and charged systems, or the spilling factor as an error estimate for machine learned force fields, to name just a few. The best is to go ahead and try it yourself. We hope you get a lot out of it. Mm -hmm.